So I wanted to invite you guys uh, and welcome you to today's presentation. We're going to talk to you guys a lot about a, a couple different things. One is about how, as an owner-operator or even a dispatcher or whoever, uh, could actually better your negotiations um, with your brokers um, through a multitude of different reasons. We're going to present some really cool new features that we launched just this morning that we, you guys are going to get the very first look at. Um, plus, we're going to give you some tips and tricks. So uh, I want to introduce myself real quick. My name is Robert Rouse. I'm the product manager for all mobile products at DAT. I've been w with DAT for about eight years. And over that time, I've spent a lot of time working in support, working directly with customers, uh, and making, you know, seeing what we can do to fix oh. their needs. And that really drove me to join our product team to see how I can uh, give more and more products mm -hmm. uh, to, to you guys so that way you guys can get better and better at what you're doing on a daily basis. Um, but with me, I really wanted to bring somebody that does this all the time as well and uh, brought Chad with me. Chad, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I don't think it's working, oh, wait, but we'll, we'll... I can talk really loud. Can you all hear me back there? <laughs> One second. He'll, he'll turn that on. If you yell. If I yell. Hello, hello, hello. Testing, testing. So close. Hello. It was working earlier. <laughs> it was, yeah. Hello, hello, hello. All right, Chad, Chad, you. I can get over close. I'll get, <laughs> there okay. we go. We can make it happen. Uh, my name is Chad Boblet. Yeah, I do. This is all I do for like the last uh, eleven years. Um, I did 10 years in the Marine Corps, got out, and the first thing I did was get into trucking, and uh, I've been in business for 11 years, run the spot market. 99% of my freight comes from the DAT load board. That's all I've used. Uh, I bought my first truck with four credit cards, and uh, I've never leased on anyone. That, there you go, that's my story. Well, and, and, oh, and rate for my masters. Oh, I, uh, here's a question. Anytime I do these, I like to ask the question. Does uh, anybody know of the Facebook group called Rate for My Masters? Raise your hand. Okay, we've got a few. All right. Well, I'm the I'm the person that created that uh, eight years ago. We just hit we just hit our eight year mark uh, on the uh, this month, um, and we're at thirty two thousand members. But those are vetted members. Uh, thanks for being part of the group. Awesome. Ooh. Hello, hello, hello. All right. Let's see if it can. There we go. Just take a second. All right, so one of the things that I want to make sure every single one of you take out of, of this, this uh, meeting here, the first thing is data equals confidence. It's super huge. We're going to tell you how you can utilize data to, to actually have confidence in all your negotiations. We're going to show you how you can take control of that negotiation by posting your truck. A lot, a lot of owner operators and drivers, they do lots and lots of load searching. We're going to show you how to flip that, post your truck, and do some really cool things with that. Thirdly, the more confidence you have in the negotiation as the carrier, it really helps out both sides of that negotiation, and it helps equal higher rates for you as the carrier, because you can actually talk to the broker and, and really have a good conversation about where the market is, where your position, and your specific value in that market. And we're gonna to talk to you a little bit about how DAT tools can help you out with that. But as we do that, which one? Before we get too far in here, we want to show you a cool video that we've made. See if we can get that switched over. I've got another one here. This is that's all. Well, I'm, I'm not trying to be 
a bad guy here because that's not my job, right? My job is to make sure it all works well. Let me do one thing real quick if you don't mind. Give me your own seat on I just want to see if, uh, if people are still talking good and I should all oh, I appreciate that. You got to check everybody. Every time, man. Every time. You got perfect reviews. Print store is 97. They just came to the king. That checks them up. So we're going to come up with four. How are you, man? You're going to pay your bills. What do you think, man? You can pay your bills. You can pay your bills. All right. You know, you can go to Sparrow with zero rates. Can we do 314? All right. Let's get it done, man. All right, so, so we're, what we're going to talk about today, there's a lot of things that probably sounds fairly familiar to a lot of you guys, right? Uh, a lot For those of you that are owner operators or brokers or, or whatever, if you run in the spot market, that should seem very, very familiar to you. But there's some key pieces in that that we're going to deep, deep dive into <clears throat> that's going to really help you figure out how to get better in all those areas. So one of the things that when you're talking that back and forth, and Chad's gonna go into it a little bit more, is how the data that he gets from DAT help give him confidence in that negotiation, right? Because as that broker is saying, well, I, I don't know, the, the rates are actually a little bit lower. You can, you can kind of come back and say, well, here's all of this other data that says rates should probably be a little higher on this lane. And we're gonna show you how, how to do that throughout. So the key piece, the more data you have, the more confidence you can take into that negotiation that you know exactly what, you should, what your value is in the market and how you can continue to improve. All right, so the, before we get started, as I was telling you guys uh, as we were opening, we have this new DAT1 application, right? Why is it important? Because um, it's really it's something that you know, we're really passionate about delivering to you guys. Um, let me see if I can get to the next slide. So some of you that have been around DAT for a long time might remember a, an application called Load Board for Truckers. That's still out there. That's still an application <clears throat> you can use. But DAT1 has a lot more to it, right? So we take all the really cool features that we have in the Load Board for Truckers application and added it into DAT1. And, and for those of you that might even know DAT from really long ago, we had a, an app called DAT Trucker. We kind of merged all that stuff together. So now with DAT1, you can find your fuel, you can find how much the fuel is at different locations, you can find where you can get your reefer uh, worked on, you can find where you can get your truck washed, right? All in the same application that you can also find your freight, post your truck, and do almost everything that you need to do with DAT all from one application. And there's a lot more that we're coming out with this new application. So throughout this, you're gonna see this QR code anytime, take, take out your phone, snap that QR code, and you'll be able to download that application. Um, and we're gonna go through how you're gonna do a couple different things. All right, so the very first thing a lot of you guys, how many of you guys have actually looked at DAT trend lines? Actually more than I thought, a, a bunch of you, awesome. Well, we're, we're gonna talk more about why that's important, okay? So before you can really work, I think a lot of you guys that work in the spot market all the time probably have a good gut that says, here's how much the market is, right? And that's kind of based on some different information. Well, what Trendlines does is it looks at the national averages of all the, all the data that DAT has on rates, right? And we have the biggest rate platform out of everybody, right? So we take all of that data and we look at what is the different national trends um, and why are those important, right? And we break it down by vans, flatbeds, or reefers, so whatever versions you, you run, you can look at what the national average is, you can see if it's going up over, week over week, month over month, year over year, and you can kind of start to see how that, those trends work, and then you can take that data in, into consideration when you're pricing your truck. Now, Chad, I know it's one of the, the cool tools that you use uh, almost every day, right? Every, every day. Every day? You want to give me a good example of, of how you kind of use this to help better your business? Uh, yes, uh, it's probably one of the first tools I use when it comes to negotiating with brokers. Um, it comes out every, it used to come out every Monday, now it's every Tuesday it comes out, I believe. Uh, and um, it's, it's like a benchmark. 
Uh, and the way I started using it at the very beginning was I take what the, what last week's number was. Well, if it said whatever the rate is, I think last week was three oh six, three dollars and six cents per per mile for van. Well, th when I say it's the benchmark, then for me the way I look at that is is I got to beat that number. Fifty percent of the of owner operators or fifty percent of the trucks out on the road that's running the spot market is above that, and fifty percent are below that. I want to be above that. And the next thing I do to add to that is uh, I want uh, DAT trend lines is based on loaded rate per mile. I use I, I combine my deadhead and loaded rate per mile. I know if I'm beating this, then I'm beating the average, and that's that's mainly that's mainly how I use it. And also, when I talk to other people, it's one of the first questions I ask them: What is your rate per mile? What is your loaded? What is your deadhead? And I add those up, and I and I, and I let them know. All right, well, you're below this or you're above this, uh, but yeah, that's how I use it. So so, your your rate you want to make each week changes based on DAT trend line. So, so next week it's gonna be different than it is this week, right? Right, and I'll add up all the runs that happen for that, whole, for, that, for that entire week. For that entire week, and then going forward, my benchmark, what I'm trying to shoot for is I gotta beat this, I gotta be better than the average. And uh, I keep that in my mind, and I always pay attention to it. This is where we're at. And it fluctuates a little bit, you know, when we get into, we're going into spring, uh, when we get into spring, flowers are going to be coming out, seasonal type of loads are going to be coming out, those, the rates will go up, and you need to know where those rates are going up. Uh, you know, it wasn't too long ago, um, $2 per mile was, was what everybody was getting, but if you're paying attention to this, now everybody's getting $3.06. $3 is the new $2 per mile rate. Absolutely. So that's going to be really important for what I want to talk to you guys about next. So, and it's free. Sorry about that. <laughs> and, it, and it is free. So what I want to talk to you guys about is the new feature that, that we released just today on the new DAT1 application. So one of the things that a lot of carriers that I've talked to, uh, and I talk to carriers every single week, is, you know, hey, can we get brokers to post more rates? Can we, can we you know, we want to see that, that kind of thing. But the other coin, the other side of that coin, is that they've also talked about, hey, let me tell brokers how much I want to make per mile, right? Because the number one reason a lot of owner operators that I've talked to have, have said they, that they don't post their truck is because they get a lot of phone calls from brokers that want like, hey, we take a dollar a mile, right? And, and the average is $3 a mile, right? And they just don't want those phone calls because they want to talk to brokers that meet them at where they're at, right? So with our new, uh, my trucks within the DAT1 application, drivers will be able to post their rate on their truck. So Chad can post $4 a mile uh, or whatever he decides he, want, he wants to post. And then the brokers will see that when they're searching for the truck, right? So that way the broker can look at all the trucks posted on, on there. The broker before even picking up the phone call knows if they're in the right ballpark, right? I've talked to a lot of brokers over the last couple weeks trying to help see, you know, hey, how does this coin work for both sides? And even the brokers I've talked to said that this is gonna be awesome for them as well, because once they know how much you're gonna make, it's gonna make that negotiation even stronger and even better, right? Because you guys are, you have a starting point. Um, Chad, one of the things that we were talking about, about rates is when it comes into the negotiation for you, you usually said it's, it's one of the last things you talk about, right? Yeah, rates is the last thing that uh, comes up. You, you first want to know if you can do the load or not, and then uh, once you determine if, um, yeah, this is a go, this is a load that I want to do, then then it comes into uh, naming your rate. Right. So, Chad, I know I know this has been been something you've been interested in a long time. What? How else do you think this is going to help drivers? Oh, I'm, uh, this is something I get to talk about. This I love this part because uh, I've been asking about being for carriers being able to post the rate. For, for a long time, I mean years I've been asking for this. Um, it just totally makes, it makes, the, the number one way I make, that I do really good when, when it comes to getting uh, rates from brokers, is I'm really quick to give an answer on what my rate is. I'm, I'm, it's, uh, I, I tell the broker right away, I know what I'm looking for, I know what my rate is gonna be, and that's what brokers want. See, brokers are sitting on a lot of freight, and if you're, uh, they have access to a lot of freight. What takes so much time for that broker is to call carrier after carrier after carrier. All they're looking for is a carrier that'll take the load. The video you seen earlier of Pete, he's a real live broker and a good friend of mine. The first load I did with him, right here in Louisville, Kentucky, he had, I live in Lexington, I was picking up a load for him and uh, 
the number he, the, what he he called me up and he he had a shipper a shipper said did not did not even give Pete the broker a rate he said go find a truck that will do this and tell me what the rate is and we'll make it happen let him know what the rate was I want it at the time I do a lot of round trip type of rates where I said I'll go pick it up I'll, from the time I leave my house to the time I come back this is the rate I want long story short he get, he was able to call the shipper got me the load and it was good money for like two weeks I was getting paid round trip all the way from the time that I left the house to the back to, to back to the house on all miles the, the trick was is that I named my rate this is what uh, being able to post your rate it, it, we're going to be able to grow from this who if, uh, if if you know a lot of people says uh, a lot of I see often the owner operators will tell will tell oh, the DAT needs to make it mandatory that the broker is supposed to rate. All right, now if DAT did that, rates rates would go down. But if carriers, if all if DAT made it mandatory, which is it's not not in the talks, but if it was that all carriers had to post their rate, what do you think would would happen with rates? It would go up. It would go up because now we're in control. And we're telling the broker what we want. I mean, there's just so many, so many benefits to this, especially on Fridays. On Fridays, I'm at home. I don't want to leave. But you know what? If I can get a lot of money real quick, like, I'll post my rate and I'll go make that money. And I could do it with this. And the, the, I don't want to take up too much time, but the one, the, one thing that, uh, the one thing I like the most is I don't want to talk to, I don't want to waste my time talking to brokers about a rate that I'm not interested in. Why well, do that? I post my truck all the time. It's the first thing you do. You're paying for the load board. Make the load board work for you. Post your truck. You, I mean, if if uh, if DAT said, hey, we're gonna, you have to start, uh, char we're gonna start charging people to post their truck. I mean, would you, for one post, uh, if I would pay fifty, a hundred dollars, but th but it's totally free with the membership. Uh, this is the way to do it. When you post your truck, you be able to, be able to post your rate. They're going to come to you. Uh, totally makes sense. And, and you're eliminating all the, the excess phone calls. The broker already knows. And by doing this, the broker's going to know, hey, we can't, no reason to call this guy if he's got himself posted for $4 per mile. That's the last thought I want to <laughs> Absolutely, Chad. I completely agree. Um, the other pieces I want to touch on, just to make sure that you guys understand, posting your rate is, is a great new feature. But if you're using it today, you should be also doing these other things. Um, posting the right equipment type. Make sure that the, the more detail you can put in about your truck posting, the easier it is for the broker to, to call you because they know that you can haul the freight that they have, right? So they don't have to call you like, hey, I see you got a flatbed. Do you, do you have chains? Do you have tarps or, or, or things like that? Post your truck with, with everything you have so that way the broker has a clear idea when they pick up the phone to call you. The other piece is include your destination. Right? One of the things I've heard from carriers is like, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I post going anywhere, right? which is great because you know, anybody will go anywhere for a certain price. Right? Like You tell me, hey, I'm going to give you 20 bucks a mile. I don't even have a CD. I'll go get one and, and I'll go somewhere for $20 a mile. Right? Anybody will go anywhere for, for a lot of money, but not everybody in here will go to southern Florida. Right? Not everybody's gonna in here going to go to the west coast. Right? Maybe you want to be east coast based. Right? Let the brokers know where you want to go so that way they can call you on things that are very close to what you're doing. Um, also let the uh, broker know your rate. The last thing is comments can help set you apart from other trucks, right? So let the broker know, hey, I'm empty now, right? Or I'm unloaded at this time. My hours reset at this time, right? All of these little things, whatever, it, you know, wh whenever you're talking on the broker, if there's little pieces, Add those to the comments. We, you have a, a decent amount of, of uh, room there to add some information so that way brokers can actually make very valuable ca calls in, when you're talking to them. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next thing. So one of the things I wanted to touch on is lane rates. So you, you looked at trend lines, figured out what, what the national average is and what you kind of want to make. You've posted your truck. Now a broker has called you and said, hey, I got this load, I, I, I want to actually uh, get you to haul this load, so we're going to talk, talk about the rates. So within DAT1 and, and DAT products, you guys were going to see something similar to this, and it's going to be the spot rate or the contract rate, right? So um, one of the things that I wanted to make sure everybody was aware of, because uh, I get questions about it, is look at the, see this one is Macon Market to Fort Wayne Market. One of the key things to think about is when you look at DAT, it, all of the markets have what we call an anchor city, 
right? So there's, there's a major metropolitan area, and that's where the center, kind of the center of that market is. But those markets expand outside of that area as well, right? So like Louisville can expand quite a ways around. Um, so understand that the different markets is not just for downtown uh, Louisville, it's actually for all the surrounding areas as well. Um, and you can always look at, at DAT.com and see the actual, how those are all broken apart. On the East Coast, they're fairly small, right? And on the West Coast, they're a little bit bigger. But how we dis, uh, decide those markets is we look at all the rates within a, a specific city, and then we look at where those rates change, and that's where we draw the boundaries of those markets. Um, so anywhere in those market areas should be about the same rates. Um, the other piece, when you look at this range here, so got a little pointer here, doesn't really show up on white, but it's this section right here. The key piece about the range is that's the middle 50%. So how we calculate our rates is really important and we wanna make sure everybody knows. You, so we take all of the rates for that period and then we take out, take, throw away the top 25 and the bottom 25%, and that middle 50% is that 1870 to 2852, right? So 50% of carriers over the last seven days at this time were making those rates. So that's the range. <clears throat> and then the 2440, or uh, yeah, 2426, that's just the average, right? So that's where within that range. So in this case, the, the, it's skewed up toward the higher end of that range, right? So give you guys an idea. Um, and ba you know, the other piece is, is understanding not only how many, how many days that average is, so in this case it's the last seven days, you're gonna use that, but also use some other data we're gonna talk about in a second uh, as far as how you can change that, how that price might be increasing or decreasing based on the market. Chad, I know you, you use this a lot and I know you have some really strong thoughts about this. Uh, how do you use this on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, for, for me, I look at, there's two ways to negotiate with a broker. One is gonna be based on supply and demand. We can talk about that later. The other way is gonna be, uh, is, um, is, is uh, rates, uh, rates for the, rate for the lane. And how I do this, if I'm in a really hot market, I'm going off supply and demand. I'm g giving a number based on supply and demand. I'm gonna do round trip rates, uh, which I'm gonna look at DAT trend lines and come up with a number that way. There's several different ways to do that. But whenever, if I'm in a market and it's tight, usually Texas, a lot of places in Texas is like that, where it's almost equal, the number of, uh, the, there's a, the same amount of loads as there is uh, trucks. And uh, that means um, it, when it's equal like that, then I got competition. Or if it becomes less, uh, where there's uh, less loads and a lot more trucks, this is where this comes into play. Because uh, you don't want to you don't want to go too cheap. I know you, but you feel like you're like uh, you have to go cheap in order to get the load. You don't want to go too cheap. But if you can, but right, this this is like the magic number. Like I want to go home. Let, let me let me give and I don't want to play around. There's only three loads posted. Let them let me give them the magic number. What brokers have been paying for this lane for this entire time. This is when if you really want the load, this is how you do it. Is you look at what everybody else is doing. I mean, and then here's the the magic to this is whenever you tell the broker this is what it's going for and when you give that confidence and you let the broker know this is what it's going for there is 17 reports within the last 30 days there's seven in the last seven day there's eight reports in the last seven day average that builds up confidence well the broker knows well he he, ain't, he knows his stuff uh, and uh, he is right you know that's how you win it yeah absolutely all right so as we're building Throughout, throughout this, we're, we're, we're going through all the rate information. Now we're gonna keep moving along. Um, the biggest thing is in this, you're, what we're really showing you guys is how you as the driver, right, when uh, you know, you're getting the broker to call you, that puts you in the control of the negotiation, right? Because when a driver, or when a broker is calling you as a driver to haul freight, they need you, right? Your value is up. Right, because they they're, they're, they need you right now, right? When you are calling them, you need them, right? It changes the whole dynamic of, of the entire negotiation. And so that's the key piece of that section we wanted to really help you guys understand. Posting your truck, yes, you're gonna get phone calls, yes, you're gonna have to have conversations with brokers, but it's gonna be better because you're gonna be able, they're gonna have the, the rates, 
they're gonna have all the information and you're gonna be even better prepared for those conversations with all of the data that DAT has for you. I would much rather have the broker call me than the, for me to be making the calls to the broker. But I'm gonna do both. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about the lane demand, right? So one of the, you know, in anything that you're doing, it's everything supply and demand, right? The more loads in a market and the less trucks in the market, right? That changes it. More trucks in a market, less loads, that changes, that makes it in the broker's favor, right? So knowing those different uh, market dynamics is super important. Um, so one of the first things, if you ever get a phone call about a broker asking you, hey, will you do this load? anywhere, right? Especially they're calling you on your posting. One of the first things you wanna do is you wanna check out that market that you're in. You wanna make sure that you understand how many loads are going out there. And make sure you look not just where you're wanting to go, but all the loads in the entire market, because that's gonna help you understand how hot is this market? How many loads are here, right? And, and if there's tons and tons of loads, that means you're really, really in demand at that time, right? If there's not so many, you know, then it kind of changes those dynamics a little bit like we were talking about. Um, but what a lot of people that I've talked to don't do, they don't always check the actual market that you're going to, right? So if we're in the example we were talking about with going from Atlanta to Louisville, right? Um, you know, Chad would, would go and check Louisville as well because that's where he's going and he wants to make sure he can get out of there. Chad, I know we've, we've had lots of conversations about this, but how, you know, talk them through how you do that because I, I know you, you work magic with it. Uh, take, uh, take your back hall with you. Uh, I, I, I preach this all the time. I mean, that's a note, write it down because I'm getting ready to explain to you. Uh, yes, everybody can, uh, that does van can make good money going into Florida. This is a good example and I'm using Florida. There's a lot, but you do this in every single market you do. It doesn't matter what my rate is going into Florida. What matters is, is when you add up the, the, your total number of miles going in and coming back out of Florida and how, how much money did you make? What's that come out to per, per mile? Like for instance, the way I would do this, if I'm here in Louisville and I'm going to, my, I get a load from a broker going to Miami, Florida, he wants me to quote it, which is, I wouldn't post myself for Miami, Florida, but if the broker called me up and says, we got plenty of money, just tell us what your rate is, I would post it, I would run the miles from, from here in Kentucky all the way into Miami, Florida, and then probably right now, this time of the year, back to Atlanta, Georgia, or something south or near Atlanta, the Atlanta market. I would come up with those total number of miles, and that, uh, that's how I would assess how much money I want to make on that to total run, that uh, taking your back all with you. And you do that for every one of them. I never want to go to a place where it has more freight coming into that market than there is leaving that market. Super huge. There's lots of DAT tools that you can use for this. We have them in the DAT One app. If, you, if some of you guys use it on a desktop, you can also use, our, it's a tool called National Load Counts. It's right there on the Trucker's Edge front page, right? So you can see all loads in and out of a, a specific state. Um, so it can help you with that research. So again, we're building more and more data so that way as you're going through this negotiation, you can quickly talk back to the broker and say, hey, Here's, you know, you're, you're wanting me to go to, let's say, to not pick on Miami too much, let's say Fargo, North Dakota. There's not a lot of freight going, there may be, there's freight going in, there's not always a lot of freight going out of there, right? And so you, deadheading and all that kind of stuff. So it, the, all the markets around the entire country can, can change drastically, and it could be strong today, and it could be strong, not strong uh, tomorrow. So you really have to check um, every single time you're, you're having these negotiations. I'll, I'll add something to that. Quote the ugly load. If you uh, Google that, I wrote a blog on DAT uh, on their website, uh, and it, and it kind of goes along with what, what we're talking about here. Uh, quoting the ugly load. A lot of people don't quote the ugly load. They don't want to go to Miami, Florida. They don't want to go to uh, Fargo. But if you quote it, if you run your miles, it don't, no problem going there. And if you make enough money to deadhead out of there, you took your backhaul with you, and there's good money in it. Absolutely. See if I can get it go to the next slide. Oh, there we go. All right. So the next thing we want to talk about is the credit score and days to pay, right? For anybody that's worked in the spot market, you guys are probably fairly familiar with this. 
Um, but I wanted to just kind of touch on it a little bit because it's definitely something that you can take into consideration when you're talking with a broker. So on DAT's load board, um, what you'll see is like, for example, th this credit score is a 90. According to our, our provider, right, low risk is anywhere from 87 to 100. A lot of our actual uh, brokers are <clears throat> towards the top end of that. Um, and then medium risk is any broker that's between 70 and 86. And then uh, high risk is anybody uh, 69 and below, right? So it's something to take into consideration when you are talking to the broker um, and, and uh, making that understood. Um, the other is the days to pay. Um, basically, it's how many days that, that on average that broker takes to pay a carrier. Um, so, you know, looking at your cash flow and all those kind of things, um, that will help you understand whether maybe you want to factor that load or maybe you want to do something else or maybe you don't, maybe they're super high and maybe you choose not to use that broker just because of those reasons. Um, Chad, this is another piece. Uh, even on, in the video, you talked to, to Pete about his uh, credit score and days to pay. Yes, credit score days to pay, that's, uh, yeah, it's very important. I will not, uh, I will not take a load from a broker until I do those, two, uh, you know, that, this is gonna be the first. Credit score days to pay, which is a given, it's, it's got, that has to fit, check the box. I won't go below that unless it's, uh, I've only done it once, and, and that was actually coming out of Fargo, south, up in that area. And the only reason why I did it is because the broker guaranteed to pay me uh, cash on delivery uh, when I showed up at the receiver. I don't like taking risk like that, but, but the way I found it was, uh, and I, and I called the broker out on it, and the broker said, well, we also, my, the, the owner of the company owns a trucking company, and he likes to buy trucks but, don't, but misses payments, and he had a low credit score because of that. Completely, completely understand. There, do we talk about reviews this time, or is that we'll later? Talk, it's coming up. Okay, we'll I, I, about that I, that's my second. favorite part, and I can't wait to get to talk <laughs> about reviews. <laughs> Chad has a lot of favorite parts here, we're, and we're going to get to that right now. All right, so oh, broker, broker reviews. Um, it's one of the, the interesting parts about the DAT load board. Um, it's something that, you know, obviously, as you said, as Chad said, it's one of his favorite things uh, about the load board. Um, but the key things to call out, and it's just showing a video going through here of uh, uh, Tad Moore's reviews, um, find out what other carriers are talking about a specific broker, right? There, sometimes a broker might have really good credit score, really good days to pay, has a great load, and the carrier didn't check their credit score, and then got kind of, at the end, was like, oh, man, there were some bad things that happened during that, 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 that interaction that if I would have read the reviews, I probably could have avoided those, right? I could have changed that. So find out what other carriers are saying, because a lot of carriers are gonna have really good information about their experience working with that specific brokers. And there's not always, a, there's not a lot of you know, bad brokers. It just means you, you need to understand what, how other broker, or carriers are seeing that and what other red flags there are. Um, the other piece, you know, the more good reviews that a, a broker has, the more trust you can have in that broker that you're gonna have a good experience, right? And bad reviews, uh, a ton of bad reviews, doesn't necessarily mean that's a bad broker. It just means you need to Make sure that you are taking precautions and that you're talking through and you're understanding what questions to ask them and looking at what other carriers have, have said, like, you know, hey, this, this broker didn't pay Tanya or this broker didn't pay attention and, and that was an issue for us. And, you know, if you see that over and over again, bring that up in the, the conversation with your broker and just say, hey, can you make sure it's on the rate con that, that detention is whatever you want, $75, you know, an hour or whatever it is, or how many hours are, are covered under that. And just make sure it's spelled out in your rate confirmation and, and that helps you um, versus waiting until after something bad happens and be like, oh man, I should ask those questions. Chad, I know you're itching to talk about this. Uh, absolutely, you <laughs> I love this part. Um, you know, I was, a part, I was with DAT when DAT first came out with this, uh, reviews. Brokers have had for years a place to go to vet carriers, and carriers have like almost uh, been off limits to that site. Uh, and DAT has brought this to us. It's almost like DAT did this for the carriers. So this is the reason why you've got to take advantage of it. Uh, probably so credit score number one. But I can almost 
I can almost skip the credit score. I don't, I'm just saying I could almost skip the credit score if I read the reviews. And what I'm saying is, like you just seen pizza reviews, and that's, that's real, that, that ain't nothing, that's real, real Pete has like five stars, 30, 30 reviews. People love working with Pete, he's a small broker, and there's a lot of brokers like that. Uh, and when it comes down, if I come, if I come across, a, uh, here's one question uh, that I get asked a lot. Chad, do you read, um, do, you, do you tell the broker every single time that you want detention? No, if I come across some, because uh, I always tell people that, I, that one of the practices I like doing is, is telling the broker, I want non-ending detention, $60 an hour, non-ending. And I can get into that, that's another subject. But uh, would I tell that to Pete? No, I'm not gonna tell that to Pete. Pete's got, Pete's got perfect stars. What, that I've already, I'm, my questions get very limited to what I'm gonna say to Pete. Pete's one of those people with those good reviews, and there's a, a lot of, there's a lot of other brokers just the same way. When they got good reviews like that, I could skip over all the other stuff because a lot of the, the whole thing of working with the broker is trust and getting the rate you want. And if I can work with the broker, the, the rate part is easy. So, and I'm using the reviews to vet that part. Uh, it's, it's, it's the perfect way to do this. One, one, the, as soon as the reviews came out, it saved me. The first time it saved me, out of Texas, Dallas, Texas, the broker gives me the load. Uh, I'm waiting on the rate sheet, and I go read the reviews about the broker. It was kind of new at that time, but already people had started posting. The carriers had started posting and working with this broker. And every single post, well, it was only like five, five posts at the time, but every one of those five complaints was all the same thing. And the same thing that everybody was saying about this broker was the broker did not pay attention. As soon as I got on the phone, I called, I called the broker back up. I'm like, hey, you paid attention, right? You know, I, I don't do, I don't, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do this load if you don't pay attention. And the broker just automatically said, no, we don't pay attention. Well, I mean, no, I can't work with you, man. I, I, I'm not, you know, cause I don't know what's gonna happen. Every broker I work with is gonna pay attention. I, and I can keep talking about reviews. I mean, this is the DA, DAT did this for the carriers. I mean, and and uh, you know, brokers were kind of scared about this. Uh, use the reviews. If if the broker has a lot of uh, a lot of negative reviews, then uh, the, the more you need to vet the broker that you're going to be working with. Absolutely. I, I will say one thing. It's not just for the carriers. It's gr it's great, right? But it's it's also the other way around. Is is at, you know, as a carrier, you can also do the flip side. Right? If you have lots of brokers that you work with, you can ask them to review you on DAT, right? Um, you know, that's definitely something that is, can help a carrier set themselves apart, uh, especially when they're posting their truck and they're getting their name out there, right? If you're a newer carrier and a broker looks and says, hey, there's 15 brokers that took the time to say how awesome it was to work with this carrier, you're probably gonna get the same, same respect, right? You're gonna probably get a little bit of higher rate um, they're gonna they're gonna do the same thing. We're like, oh man, you know, all these brokers have have said, I love working with this carrier. They're gonna give you that same respect as well. So it's for for everybody, right? So both sides can use it uh, as they need it. Uh, if you if a broker asks you to write a review for them, then do it. The the uh, I think it's the best thing ever. You know what? A lot of times I will cancel out a review in my head if something goes wrong. You know, not everybody's perfect. L the things are going to happen. Things are going to go wrong. And if it and if it does happen, and the broker uh, writes a rebuttal to uh, or to that comment, or you uh, ask you to, to to give them a review, give them a review. I, I think it's the best thing ever. Again, and like uh, like Robert was saying, uh, the often the broker will, will give you a review as well, and that's how. That's a great screenshot for your website. You know, shippers, they never get to see the reviews on DAT, but if they go to your website and they see, they see these, all these reviews that brokers are saying about you, it's, it's powerful. Absolutely. So with all of this data, right, with all of this information, it's gonna help you be able to have that conversation even better. And the more confidence you have, the more credibility the broker is gonna see in talking with you, right? So Chad, I, I know this is something that um, I've heard a lot about you. Has this helped you in your negotiations with, with brokers and in, in how much you go back and forth with them in data? With, uh, with the confidence? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. P uh, the, giving out the, uh, again, giving out the rate, giving the broker the rate, uh, 
that immediately sends off confidence uh, to the broker, letting them know he, this guy's in charge. He knows what he wants. Uh, when Pete cut, like the story earlier, when Pete said, uh, said, we just need a rate. You know, often brokers want to know what the rate is, quoting that load, quoting that load, and uh, being able to get to the broker and give, tell them what the rate is. Let's say I, I, I got someone that's going to be painting my house because I'm getting ready to move out of it. The, he's, that painter is a service provider. I'm not, I didn't go to the, uh, the, the painter didn't say, well, how much money will you give me to paint, paint, to paint your house? You know, it, that, it doesn't work like that. If we, we as carriers, as service providers, we need to be telling the broker what we want. It's not, don't be scared about it. Don't, don't uh, you know, that, that's the way to do it. That shows confidence. The thing, when I coach people, when I coach other owner operators, carriers that are getting started, and I listen to them, the, when they're talking to a broker, the thing that annoys me is the first thing is that they say to brokers is, is how much money are you going to give me to do your load? You tell the broker how much money you want. It's a total different world when you start telling, telling the broker what you'll do the load for. I promise you.